हेलो डिफेंस एस फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक इन डिफेंसली आप सुन रहे हैं इंडियाज ब्रेव हर्ट्स ऑडियो बुक चैप्टर फोर मैं और मेरी हेलमेट वन मॉर्निंग द सूबेदार मेजर कैम रनिंग टू माय ऑफिस सेइंग दैट टू विलेजर्स हैड कम फ्रॉम आर नियर बाय विलेज With the news that six terrorists had forcibly taken shelter in the house of a relative of theirs, the terrorists looked tired, and while they were resting, a boy from the household had slipped out in to inform us. The village was about an hour's walk from our base, which was one. the bank of the mandi river there were very few villages and a relatively sparse population between the loc and the river when terrorists infiltrated they aimed to get across the mandi to the more densely populated side where they would be able to merge more easily with the locals the entire area between the loc and the river was our responsibility and all my companies and the others smaller detachments such as the ghatak platoon and logistics unit were tactically deployed at various points in this vast area it was my mandate to ensure that no infiltrator was able to get across the river it so happened that i was the only officer present at the battalion base when we received information about the six terrorists terrorists hiding in the nearby village my adjutant my adjutant the officer who would have led the operation happened to be away he doubled up as the quartermaster looking after logistics and had gone to the brigade headquarters in the morning for a logistic conference two other search operations had been launched earlier that morning and it would take some time for those troops to be diverted back so i decided to go ahead and lead the operation personally till the backup platoon under major himanshu savant reached the village where the terrorists were holed up here i must also explain that for every operation that turned into a successful encounter we would carry out 8 to 10 such operations that didn't pan out most of the tip offs we received would prove to be wrong or outdated or both both that day however i felt confident that the information was correct and current because these two men were not our usual sources who brought second hand information they were relatives of the man into whose house the terrorist had forced their way in i got the necessary strength of soldiers ready to launch the operation even as himanshu's platoon from the loc was summoned his party would reach later because they were located further away from the village however they would have to walk down hill while my party had to walk up hill from the base from the base as we were about to start from the base i saw the subedar major briefing my qrt members very intently a subedar major is the senior is most enlisted 
सोल्जर ऑफ द बटालियन ही इज अ वेरी रिस्पेक्टेड फादर फिगर फॉर ऑल द सोल्जर्स अराउंड टेन ईयर्स ओल्ड दैन द सी ओ अ गुड सूबेदार मेजर इज हिज राइट हैंड मैन ही मैरिज हिज एक्सपीरियंस एंड विजडम वाइल एक्सप्रेसिंग हिज ओपिनियन एंड एडवाइजिंग सीनियर ऑफिसर्स नॉट हैजिंग टू एडवाइज इवन द सी ओ I jokingly said to him, क्या हो गया साहब आज मेरी क्यूआरटी से बहुत बातें हो रही है What's the matter today? You are having very long discussions with my क्यू आर टी क्विक रिएक्शन टीम ही सेड सर दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम दैट यू आर गोइंग नॉट ओनली एज द सी ओ बट ऑल्सो एज द ऑफिसर इन चार्ज ऑफ दिस टीम आई वॉज वेरी प्लेज बाय His reply: This is the kind of establishing role that a subedar major is supposed to play in a battalion. He also reminded me that I had to make a brief visit to the unit temple before setting out for the operation. I followed his advice and sought the blessing of the alimity. Alimity. We walked through the villages and fields until we came to a rocky slope with very few fields and buildings. There were only a small number of scattered houses beyond which one could see the barren slopes leading up to his ride ride line. A cluster of three houses was pointed out to me, in which the terrorists were said to be resting. They had been walking for a couple of days to reach their de- destination and were hex-hearted. They had asked for food and then gone off to sleep. They would not be in one house, so we had to plan on laying. Cordon to cover all three houses. I asked both the platoons to pan out and establish a cordon among the rocks and trees that dotted the landscape. It was a treat to see the soldiers harmoniously move under cover just as they had been instructed, despite the fact that they did not belong. to a single platoon or company i had pulled together all the soldiers who were at the base for any reason including those waiting to go on leave or to the hospital the next day it took about 30 minutes for the cordon to be established the cordon commander subedar karnel singh gave me the completion report on the radio along with another piece of good news major himan sud platoon would also arrive in another half hour or so he was uh, arrive from the north walking downwards while my party which had panned out into a cordon would now silently move up hill from the south The aim was to completely encircle the enemy. My platoon started moving upward carefully. If you don't follow a track, walking up the traced fields is not easy. After every 20 to 30 meters, you have to climb up to the next trace. It was like climbing a mud wall, which was 5 to 10 feet high. Suddenly AK rifles began to be fired from one of the houses everyone ducked and took cover below the mud walls of the fields once i had established that no one was hit the feeling that overcame me was paradoxically one of excitement and relief i felt happy that our information about the terrorist was correct and that the cordon was in place we were ready for a successful operation 
हुई वे आर एट अ स्लाइट डिसएडवांटेज हाउ एवर एज दे वे आर फायरिंग डाउन हिल एट अस हुईच इज ऑलवेज मोर इफेक्टिव वाइल आवर रेंज ऑफ मूवमेंट वॉज रेस्ट्रिक्टेड वेन एवर माई वाइज टायर्ड टू फायर बैक My boys tried to fire back. The terrorist would fire from within the house, and we had to duck as we were in the open. In fact, their bullets were hitting very close to my feet. I remembered curling up my feet and seeing the dust rise from the bullets that fell near me. After a few minutes of being pinned. under fire we received some good news my radio operator informed me that himanshu's party had reached and they had opened fire on the terrorists of hill from the house this forced the terrorists to split their attention and give us a bite of a breather we decided to crawl to the other side of a dry nala about 40 meters away and position ourselves behind a cluster of rocks it would allow us to get closer to the houses and give us a better position as i was about to get up a member of my qrt rifleman said singh blocked me my way and inst- instead that i wear a helmet he held out an extra helmet to me i told him you know that i don't wear a helmet i have never worn a helmet in operations he was unmoved sahab abhi bilkul kargar fire hai aur range bhi bahut kam hai the terrorist fire is very effective and from a very close range he requested again that i wear the helmet I tried to make light of it. Come on, said Singh. Let's go. कुछ नहीं होगा. Nothing will happen. But he would not let me go past him. He then said something that touched me. Subedar Major Sahab will court martial me. That I that is what he was telling me before we left. He told me that if there was a situation where I saw you risking your life, it was my duty to save you. Have especially told me to insist that you wear your helmet. The Subedar Major's impatient briefing flashed before my eyes. I was overwhelmed. I took. the helmet from said singh and or it for the one rare time during these operations that day we went on the, to eliminate those six dreaded terrorist and recovered a large quantity of arms and ammunition it was one of our most successful operations my biggest happiness was that all our soldiers were safe but there are a couple of interesting side stories to tell and they have to do with helmets at one stage during the operation we had shot down three of the terrorists in one of the houses the others three who were in the second house made a break for it and started running up the slope through the rocks these terrorists were wearing combat jackets and it was difficult to make out the difference between our soldiers and the terrorists from a distance sitting on my rocky vantage point a solution struck me like a flash i took the radio set from my radio operator and said all stations tiger here all soldiers must wear helmets terrorists are wearing combat jackets but not helmets 
anyone not wearing a helmet shoot him down and that is what our soldiers did the last terrorist had surprisingly reached quite far through the rocks when he was bowed down there's another unbelievable twist nayab subedar karnel singh proud rifleman kamal deep from one of the assault team to me as we were winding up and checking our weapons and ammunition he said sir you won't believe this he showed me a bullet hole in front of kamal's helmet right in the center just a little above the forehead then he showed me the exit hole at the back of the helmet a bullet had presented his helmet a little above the forehead forehead and it exited from behind traveling through the couple of inches of a space between the helmet and the head i was stunned that kamal was still alive were you really wearing the this helmet i asked in disbelief did you feel the bullet hitting your helmet kamal he was visibly dazed with relief at his merciless escape from death but simply replied no sir i thought some mud and a stone recoated had hit my helmet since bullets were leading on the ground close to me how lucky can a man get what a close save luck was on our side that day from receiving sudden information from unaccepted quarter to getting timely support from major himanshu company the many things that could have gone wrong worked out right for us that day fortune favored the brave but playing it safe and wearing a helmet does help in the chapter 4 my or mary helmet thank you and jai hind for listening please subscribe now defensively on yt thank you